you can tell what's going to happen in a story just by looking at the pictures. Does anybody see something in this picture that would give you a clue as to what's going to happen in the story? There's a fishing line? Yeah, it looks like this is a bobber for, for a fishing line. So maybe this uh, section is about fishing. Owl Creek and Trout Creek flow into the river, not far from the Lee Civic Center. Nick stands in the shallow water and, through the reeds, sees two fishermen on the shore. Did you hear that River Watch got an axe pole restored up by old Fort Bernard? The first man jerks the rod as he reels. The second man baits his hook, and Nick watches the minnow in his hands. What do you mean? Restored? The second man casts his line. Nick watches the bait fly through the air and splash into the water. They did some digging so the water would flow. They planted a bush of pants to keep the water clean, even though it moves slowly. There's even an Axbo Island. The first man pulls up his hook and checks the bait. Nick watches him cast. The second man feels a tug on his line. He yanks his fishing rod to set the hook, but his line is loose. Nick sees a blue crab stealing the bait. The second man says, It can't be the way it used to be. I remember my grandfather's stories. Somewhere the river used to make a curve like an S. Steamboats couldn't steer around it. The first man asks. So they turned around and went back to Fort Myers? Nick grabs the crab and eats it. Nope. The boatman tied ropes to the trees. They pulled the boats around the curves. It was called Rope Bend. It was famous and they even made it into picture postcards. The second man pulls up an empty hook. Nick walks away from the voices. State Road 31, known by some as the Dixie Highway, crosses the river east of Fort Myers. Nick stands on a piling. Above him is a small house on the side of the bridge. Inside, the bridge tender makes sure that cars and trucks stop so the drawbridge can open for boats. Just east of the bridge, a sailboat sounds its horn. It is too tall to pass under and waits for the bridge to open. The bridge tender turns on the alarm bells. The noise is loud, but Nick doesn't fly away. Red lights flash on the gates. When lowered, the gates keep cars and trucks off the bridge. When the bridge is empty of cars and trucks, the tender turns on the motors and Nick feels the throbbing. At the center of the bridge span, two sections of the bridge rise. After the boat passes through, the bridge sections lower into place. Joined again at the center, the bridge is now safe for cars and trucks to pass. The gates are raised, the lights stop flashing, and the bells stop ringing. Nick hears the hum of tires as traffic moves across the bridge again. He also hears the cry of gulls and sees them behind the boat as they swoop and dive in its wake. They are catching small fish that tumble to the surface as the boat's propeller churns the water. From the piling, Nick flies to the shallow water near shore where some of the small fish scatter. He catches and eats one and then another. at Manatee Park today reading this book. Starting in 1987, it was developed by high school students. They worked really hard to make this beautiful place. On the south bank of the river looms the Florida Power and Light Plant. Built in 1958, it used to burn diesel fuel to make electricity. Since 2002, it burns natural gas. Water for cooling the plant's hot engines comes from the river. The heated water flows into a canal that drains into Orange River. On the west side of the canal and along the north shore of the river is Orange River Preserve, purchased by Lee County's Conservation 2020 program. A bird watcher there sees Nick fly above the canal. On the east side of the canal is Manatee Park. The land is owned by the power company Lee County and other groups pay for the building and the people who work there. Nick lands on the bank of the canal and hears a guide say, I see a group of manatees just at the entrance. 
they come here when when the temperatures in the Gulf falls below 68 degrees. She shades her eyes with one hand and points with the other. Here's one, a girl says. She stands with her mother and brother on a sidewalk behind a fence that surrounds the manatee viewing area. Look at his snout. It's ugly. A boy kicks at the ground with one foot. Their mother says, You're seeing it through the water so it looks strange, like when you see your friend underwater in a swimming pool. Is it looking for something to eat? The girl asks. The guide says, Manatees aren't fish, so they have to surface to breathe. They need air to live, just like we do. What do they eat? The girl asks. They eat sea grasses and other plants that grow in the water. That's why they're called sea cows, the guide says. It, it won't try to eat that bird over there? The boy points to Nick. His mother laughs. Don't be silly. You've never seen a cow try to eat a bird. I'd like to, though. The boy kicks the fence and it rattles. Nick flies away. In 1995, some citizens wanted to preserve natural areas in Lee County. They asked the government to help, and in 1996, voters agreed to pay more taxes to buy wild lands. In 2008, the 2020 program had bought 97 parcels, nearly 21,000 acres, including Orange River Preserve and the Caloosahatchee Creeks Preserve, which protect part of the watersheds of Daughtry's Creek, Cone Branch, Chapel Branch, Bayshore Creek, Popash Creek, Stroud Creek, and Palm Creek. Similar land acquisition programs exist in Charlotte, Polk, and Sarasota counties. Today we're at the Caloosahatchee Creeks Preserve maintained by the Lee County Parks and Recreation Department. This land was purchased through the 2020 program. On Interstate 75, cars and trucks roar across the bridges. On the river's north shore, the interstate cuts through the Caloosahatchee Creeks Preserve. The mangrove islands nearby form the Caloosahatchee National Wildlife Refuge. Nick stands in the water near the mangroves. A lizard runs along a branch. A breeze rustles the cabbage palms and sea grapes that grow at the island's center. Two white egrets and a great blue heron hunt for fish. In the water, three pelicans have eaten and are resting. The breeze blows again. Nick watches a mangrove leaf fall. Beneath it, he sees many leaves sunk in the water. They are caught in the prop roots of the mangrove. As the water moves, they are ground into smaller and smaller pieces. Animals too small to see live on and eat these bits. Tiny shrimp and baby fish feed on them. A styrofoam cup bobs between the roots. A bead of styrofoam breaks free. It mixes with the leaf bits. If something eats the bead, it could get sick. A fiddler crab runs across the sand. Nick stabs for it, but misses. He stalks across the sand. His footprints join those of crabs, ibis, and gulls. Hi, I'm Carol Mahler, author of Adventures in the Charlotte Harbor Watershed. Today I'm in the television studios of the school district of Lee County, and with me today is Melissa Nell Kane. Hey, Carol, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. So today, I'm gonna tell you all about mangroves. So how many of you have ever seen a mangrove? Okay, excellent. Some of you guys have. For those of you that don't know what a mangrove is, it is a type of tree. Mangroves are trees that can live near salt water. They protect our coasts by keeping sand from washing away and by breaking the force of storm waves caused by storms. Mangroves also make new land by trapping the sand and leaves brought in by the tide. Mangrove seeds sprout before they even drop from the trees so they can float along to another shore where they'll grow. Mangrove roots offer hiding places for young fish and shellfish and the branches are home for all sorts of different birds. 
A rookery is where many of the birds build their nests in one single mangrove tree. Thanks for reading that, Melissa. Now, I've heard that mangroves can grow in fresh water. Is that true? It is true, but like a lot of things, they have places where they'd rather grow. And there's so many different types of plants that can grow in fresh water that sometimes the mangroves kind of get sort of pushed out to the side. But if you look behind me at that picture, you can see some baby red mangroves popping up right there, and that's in a saltwater area. And you can see there's hardly any other plants in there. So really, with the saltwater, they're one of the few plants that can grow there. Now, I heard you say that mangroves are a tree. They don't look like trees. It's true. They kind of look kind of strange, especially the red mangroves, which can have uh, prop roots hanging down from the branches. Who ever heard of a tree with, you know, roots coming down from the branch? But they are. They're trees, and they're one of the most important trees that we have along our coast because they really do help sort of provide almost a, a wall of protection from things like storm surge. Thanks for talking with me today. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, no problem, Carol. Thank you guys for having me. For free classroom materials, please visit our website at www.chnep.org.